Hello, happy Sunday. Thank you for joining me, those of you that are joining me live. According to Sun Power UK, in an AC circuit, true power is the actual power consumed by the equipment to do useful work. It is distinguished from apparent power by eliminating the reactive power component that may be present. The true power is measured in watts and signifies the power drawn by the circuit's resistance to do useful work. Are we more than circuits, though? That's what's up for discussion and creative interpretation this week, responding to the two-word phrase, true power. A transcript of this segment and each subsequent session will be posted for anyone interested at www.sideways8.co, which is my main outlet for poetry and photography that is personal to me through Sideways 8 Projects. Hello, fantastic people. My name is Jesse James Ziegler. I'm the current poet in residence for the Bruca Theater of the Sierra in Reno, Nevada. I'm an active poet, special event MC, principal photographer, special event host, and now weekly wellness writing workshop host in collaboration with Spoken Views Collective, of which I'm also a board member. This week's writing prompt, respond to the true two-word phrase, true power. Well, I looked elsewhere, besides in uh, electric circuitry, I looked in Psychology Today from an article in 2012 that's entitled The 12 Laws of True Power by Neil Burton, MD, uh, that was for also from Hide and Seek was uh, the subtitle of the article. Read lots of books. You won't know anything otherwise. Knowledge is power. Start writing even if it's just letters for a diary. Writing forces you to uncover and complete your thoughts. It also exercises your judgment and sharpens your sense of justice. Number three, only ever act out of love. If you do what you love, it'll feel like fun and never like work, and you'll be very good at it. Number four, never worry about what people think. If you worry about what people will think, you'll end up thinking and being just like them, which isn't you. Number five, at the same time, always seek plenty of advice, but only from people whom you admire or you seek to emulate. Best of all, seek advice from great works of literature and philosophy. Number six, cultivate courage and self-confidence, which are the products of achievement and which lead to even greater achievement. Number seven, conversely, root out all cowardice, which is a magnet for worry and bad luck. Number eight, be very sensitive to your feelings and your intuitions, particularly those that are recurring or long lasting. The, they are your unconscious made conscious and they're always almost right. But beware of your emotions and be able to distinguish between feelings and emotions. This is a particularly true of anger, which like fear is as destabilizing and damaging as it is misguided and superfluous. If someone truly deserves your anger, just ignore him, write him off, bury him in the dust of his own insignificance. Happiness is the best and most, and com most complete revenge. Don't let people read your mind or understand you. Behave like a mystery wrapped in an enigma. If people can't figure you out, they will be fascinated by you. And number 12, and finally, as well as cultivating fear, it can be a good idea to cultivate love. Always be very good to people, particularly when doing so is pleasant or indifferent. Are we more than minds, though? I want for this personal podcast-style portion to contain information about famous writers as well as their quotes and futuristically speaking, local guests to this program who will help everyone involved gain a diversity of perspective and positively impact our individual process. We have six quotes of the week, so I'm gonna get right to them so we can get to our two pieces of the week along the lines of the prompt this week, which was respond to the two word phrase, true power. Six quotes of the week. The first is from Congruency, the true, bower, the true Power of Body Language, from the online uh, publication called Minutes, and the person who wrote this is Richard Newman in 2019. In order to communicate powerfully, we need congruency in our words, body, and voice. I've once read that 93% uh, of all communication is nonverbal. So if our words do not match up with our body language, it will send mixed messages to the people who are kind enough to listen to what we're saying. 
James A. Owen wrote, Power, true power, comes from the belief in true things and the willingness to stand belief, stand behind that belief, even in the universe itself conspires to thwart your plans. Chaos may settle, flames may die, worlds may rise and fall, but think true things will remain so and will never fail to guide you to your goals. Eckhart Tolle wrote, True power is within, and it is available now. Hazrat Inyat Khan wrote, True power is not in trying to gain power. True power is in becoming power. But how to become power? It requires an attempt to make a definite change in oneself, and that change is a kind of struggle with one's false self. Lao Zi wrote, Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. True power does not amass through the pain and suffering of others. Thank you, Joy Harjo, our United States current Poet Laureate. I'm hoping this sharing and vulnerability I'm demonstrating will encourage others who love creative writing as well to open up by sharing from their innermost related to the topic provided. I'm hoping we all gain perspective, compassion, hope, and discipline through such organized sharing. This week we have two original pieces by myself to share before we get into the weekly wellness writing workshop group portion, which is available via Zoom as an application on both your laptops and your personal handheld devices. The first poem that I have to share in relation to the phrase true power and my response to it is called to dare the cosmos. Dare a meteor shower to richly swell in me. Understand it's all divine. There is a true power which dwells in me, but I cannot call it mine. Drop for the steeple. Be a brave coward. Be the sheeple. Get devoured. Rest in peace, though you know not the hour. We the people. We the power. We seek the truth. We seek the proof behind what we're molded to and told to believe. We seek the truth to meekly remind us that this life we hold, we leave. We the people. We the power. Wear the heart on the sleeve and grind the gears until we grieve, whether it's sliding the curve or up in ivory towers. Dare a meteor shower to richly swell in me. Understand it's all divine. There is a true power which dwells in me, but I cannot call it mine. At first you might think it's lots of money or stamina mixed with Herculean strength. Else sweet as honey and perfectly timed funny, speaking with wisdom on any topic at great length. Then you grow into calling and the sacrifice all your own. In the beginning, it may feel like falling as it fades to reveal the opening tone. A handful of notes will play in ascension, in remembrance along the way. In failing to mention the true intention, we still manage to save the day. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. Force embodies more than clenched fists. True power is never really deployed, rather the source of all that exists. Once again, that was To Dare the Cosmos, already up on www.sideways8.com. The transcript from today's uh, segment will be available on there as well. The second and final piece of the week is called Ten Fingers. <clears throat> Once again, the writing prompt that prompted this was respond to the two-word phrase, true power. Ten fingers. With these two hands, I can lift over my weight in gold. But with just one finger, I can gracefully hold a camera and snap. I can boldly fold up a mic stand in my lap and rap. I can tap on my screen so frequently it will never nap. Trace my ancestors' path along the map or cock the hammer on some poor snap. To limit your view to the power of a single print is a misguided trap. So if I've been given all this power in the tip of one little finger... Imagine all the power in my own two hands if I dedicate them both to lifting others up as well as the world around me. Some others who surround me also confound me. Nevertheless, profoundly, my resonantly heart and voice is pounding. To those who underhandedly seek to disband the meek and brand them freaks, I'll hand them speak for my random weeks and land them peaks at understanding deeks. When the powers that be see Brandon leak on TV on AGT, they may soon team, they may too see me and other all others who demand to be free and live free. 
If I'm trying to lift up more than my own gold, the entire world feels lighter. Hearts grow warm, conflict stays cold, and I regain the spirit of a fighter. If I'm trying to lift up more than my own gold, our whole future is brighter. Fresh starts take form, compassion is the norm, serenity stays in the fold, and harmony can hold more tightly as an insider. With these two hands, I can lift over my weight in gold, but with just one finger, I can point to the place of their dedication. That was 10 fingers. That was the final piece of the week. Next week's writing prompt for the next episode is respond to the question, what would you save first? Uh, the writing prompt was brought about, I thought of it in relation to the smoky skies behind me. I'm in the, the smoky Sierra Nevada mountains because of all the wildfire, wildfires. So in general or abstractly or specifically, what would you save first? Respond to that question for next week's performance. That's it for my personal portion. If this is where you get off this train of thought because you checked in simply to listen, thank you for tuning in and absorbing. I appreciate your time and your consideration. If you are here for the weekly wellness writing workshop group portion via Zoom meeting, please transition to that application now using the link provided in the Collective Breath Bruca Theater Facebook event page. Right there in the details, the link's provided. There is no password required. Just click on there and I'll welcome you in through the welcoming room. Or the waiting room, I should say. Keep writing. Keep your heart open and your mind aware. Keep coming back for more. Keep going. Keep doing. Keep loving and creating. Keep each other safe and sound. Keep it real and keep the faith. I love you. Goodbye for now.